Hey everybody, I'm down here at the farm. You can see the new house in the background there. We'll have a video on it soon after we get some things straightened up. But uh, I haven't done a video on the, the 91 1500 in a while. Uh, I didn't have it for a while. About the time I got it running, my dad's truck broke down and he borrowed it for, well, from uh, May until October and he finally uh, got him another truck. So I got it back and I've done a few more things to it. But uh, I've been using it here around the farm and it is, I see why so many people love these trucks. I mean, they're just, it works like a truck. It drives like a car. It looks cool. Got perfect patina right now. Um, and it's, it's just easy to work on. And uh, it's been a good truck, fun to have around. And I think right now I probably have less than $1,200 in the whole thing and it's well worth it. But I bought this from my stepdad a while back, almost a year ago, got it right before Christmas last year. It's a 91 Chevy Silverado 1500, two door, two wheel drive, single cab long bed. Has the 5.7 350 V8 in it, throttle body injection, 700 R4 transmission. I think this is the last year for the 700 R4 before they switched over to the, the 4L60s with the electronic shifting. I may be wrong, don't quote me on that. Um, but uh, it's a pretty complete truck. As you can see, they all lost the hood on the, the all lost the paint on the hood and the roof. I think that was something to do with the, the metal they used or the paint they used at the time. Um, it has the two-tone deluxe paint job, black and metallic charcoal. Um, it's pretty much a time capsule. I've pretty much left it original kind of walk around here still got the stock uh steel wheels with the caps and rings pretty much the only rust in the whole truck are the cap corners right here this one's bad the other one's worse a little bit of the rocker rust rusted out on this side as well and a little bit bubbling up here behind the stainless trim on the bed but other than that it's a really solid straight truck even inside of the bed like it's scratched up but it's not beat up it had a topper on it for the longest time a bunch of straw in here i hauled all the straw that we used to put down over our grass it's got a rubber mat down up here in the corner somebody had done the you know the typical quick fix of cutting out a, a little spot in the bed to replace a fuel pump at one point but they didn't cut it all the way out so it's just pushed back down and it looks fine i guess if i wanted to be picky i could weld it back up uh, this truck was sold new by Jack uh, Burford uh, Chevrolet Nosemobile in Richmond, Kentucky. So it's been a Kentucky truck its whole life. 99.9 uh, .9 The Big Dog. That's a radio station in Campbellsville where I grew up. Has the towing package on it. Still has the trim piece on the tailgate. Pretty much the only trim that's missing is the little Silverado emblems right here. Um, it was missing the grill emblem when I got it. I found one out of a junkyard for uh, five dollars. Uh, in keeping with the Kentucky tradition and the 90s, I've got me a nice uh, Daryl Waltrip number 17 NASCAR vanity plate on the front. But uh, it's just a pretty truck, perfect patina. It's, it's a workhorse. We'll look on the inside here. burgundy interior dirty as i'll get out because it's a farm truck it gets used as such has a 60 40 split bench in it which is in really good shape a little bit of stain in here you can see a little bit of the foam showing through there on the back sliding back glass the carpet's really in good shape it just needs to be cleaned the dash is in good condition no cracks speaker grills are a little stained i don't know how i can clean those the worst part of the interior is a glove box door. It's messed up. The hinge is broken and it's kind of warping there. I'd like to find me another glove box door for it at some point. Has the nice uh, accessory cup holder there. Um, all of this right here was coming out, but I used some um, uh, upholstery adhesive and sprayed it down and got that back on there. Um, somebody's ran some screws through this one here and it's kind of coming apart, but 
I might work on that at another point. You know, all the 90s vehicles with the plastic door panels, that's something you dealt with with stuff breaking after repeated use. And the other one with these and the S10s of the same year with the, the headlight switch breaking off on the tabs on the back side and having to screw it in from the front. That's one of the uh, quick fixes from back in the day on those. I need to find these screws to hold this panel in. They're gone. And the other thing with all these GM vehicles of that same year, especially these trucks and the S10s, door pins and bushings are shot. And by the time they're worn out and you replace them, the hinges are worn out. So even putting pins and bushings doesn't fix anything. So the door doesn't line up, as you can tell. Usually you have to slam it five or six times to get it to latch, but I drowned the latch mechanism and the hinges in the WD-40 and it shuts pretty good. There's a place called Cunningham Machine that makes new oversized bushings for these in, in, a, in a kit with the pins that's supposed to get everything shutting nicely, but they're kind of spendy and I don't like this truck that much, so I'm not gonna buy them. Uh, Cracking the windshield, I ain't too worried about that. Um, let's fire it up. Sammy didn't like that. He hates vehicles that are loud. <laughs> you not like that truck? If y'all remember, all I had to do to get it running, it needed, I had to replace the tank in it, the fuel pump, fuel filter, had to put a battery in it. I uh, went ahead and changed all the oil, fluid, and filter. The torque converter makes racket in this. When you put it in gear, it winds a little bit. I think the thrust bearing's going out. It runs and drives fine. At some point, when I get more money, I'm gonna have a torque converter put in it. But, uh, as you can see, it's dirty under the hood, but this works. The, uh, the work light still works. I was driving it today and the windshield squirters still work and uh the uh cruise control still works uh i would go out on a limb to say that if you juiced up the air conditioning it would probably work too but i'm not going to risk it because those old pancake air compressors like that are just grenades waiting to go off and it probably worked for about a week or two and then lock up on me and throw a fan belt so i'm just not going to mess with the ac on it uh, just put an air filter in it uh, I need to do plugs, wires, distributor cap and rotor, full tune up on it. I think that'll get it working a lot better. Um, it runs good though. It's, the more I drive it, the better it runs. It's been set for 11 years. So, And uh, this is also a typical problem on them and you can see my quick fix. The uh, reservoir for the uh, brake fluid uh, where it connects to the uh, master cylinder, it, they get loose and it was leaking brake fluid all around here. But I just zipped down, I just zip tied the uh, reservoir a little tighter and it doesn't leak because it still looks clean from the last time I cleaned it up. The engine burns a little bit of oil on start up. I'd say the valve seals are probably dry rotted from sitting for so long uh, because according to my stepdad, this is a, a crate motor that he put in it that should have less than 3,000 miles on it. So I think anything as far as smoke and is probably related to some kind of seal or something dry rotted in it. So maybe at some point after I get the torque converter in it and get it tuned up, if it seems like it's gonna run, be a good running truck, I'm probably gonna go ahead and maybe drop the money to put valve seals in it and possibly have a body man fix these uh, uh, cap corners and just they'll shoot them back in primer for me and then I'll just kind of try to patina match the paint with a spray can of that metallic uh, charcoal. But uh, it's been a great truck. I love these OBS Chevys. This is the second one I've ever owned. Back right before I, right when I got married in 2011, I had a 94 short bed, two wheel drive, 350, everything that it had been, uh, it had the later, no, it was a 91, but it had a 94 grill on it. So it had the more round looking center bar on the grill and uh, it was on air ride. And it was a gas hog and times were rough back then, been a newlywed, so I traded it off for an S10. But uh, got a lot of history with this truck. It was my stepdad's. I can 
look back through uh, photo albums and I can see a lot of pictures where this truck is actually in the background of it so it's kind of neat but uh, I know I showed the, all the progress videos a while back when I first got it if y'all watched those you saw all the work I done to it all the brakes uh, putting the uh, fuel tank and pump in it uh, all that but uh, had this truck almost a year it runs and drives great it's nice to have around a cheap spare driver and uh, look looks good with the, the rolling hills of central Kentucky in the background here fits right in but anyway thanks for uh, watching me blab about a GMT 400 for 10 minutes and uh we'll get a video on the new house here before too long until then uh thanks for stopping by